All right, so we are going to be working on this part one file, which is this bottom file right here. We have our start document. We're going to make a copy of this. This is going to ensure that we're using the correct units. And then we have the this file right here. All right, so we have our front view. This is actually our bottom view here. It's below the front view. And then we have our right side view. So when I look at this shape here, I kind of see most of the a geometry on this front view. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the front view. And I'm going to start off by making this uh, shape right here, this kind of top shape, and I'm going to do an offset. Um, I actually start off with a kind of this outer box just to fit everything into this box. So I made a rectangle and we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start my sketch on the front plane. And actually, before I do that, one quick note is we have angle here and then we have thickness and we have height. And so those are all three dimensions given here. And if we kind of look ahead, they are going to uh, change those in question two. And then later on in question four, they actually also changed the offset. So even though offset wasn't underlined, um, when I see that five typical, that's an offset everywhere. And then this is changing it to eight typical. So I'm going to actually use that as a, um, I'm gonna use all of those as variables so I can easily change them later. So I'm going to go ahead and set up those variables. If I just type in variable, uh, this will pop up. So we had our height was 60. Our thickness is 45. The angle, I'm going to change this over to angle. I could also name these like H, T, and A. I'm going to just name them your full name though. And then offset is variable is five. So you can also make those variables as you do the sketch, but I'm going to start off uh, that ahead of time. So I'm going to start my sketch on the front plane. And I started off actually with this outer rectangle, which had a width of 100. And the height, we're going to just name it as height. So for the dimension here, we're going to call this height. And I want to get this centered. So I'm going to do the uh, midpoint right there. And I'm going to put, oops, I'm going to find that origin. Uh, there we go. We're going to click the origin and then that point. And that's going to kind of center that outer rectangle. So this is just like basically the outer, outer rectangle. Then I'm going to make this line here, this upper line, and I'm going to offset that guy. So we're going to go over by 20. We're going to kind of angle down, go down, over, up. When I go up right here, I want to make sure that this kind of is lined up, right? That orange dot, then I'm going to come over here and across. And that side is 20 as well. And you didn't have to make the outer rectangle, but that ensures that everything's kind of fitting correctly, which is nice. I'm going to add in a center point here, right? And I want that center point to also be above the origin. And then we'll add in our other dimensions. We have the angle and we have six is this height and then six is that width right there. So we have six right there. Down so we can see it. Then I have this dimension is also six. And the angle right here. I just name that angle. It's 90. And now everything turns fully defined for us, which is nice. All right. And then I'm going to trim away that top. Okay. So now we kind of have the outer part of this uh, here, and we want to get this offset piece. Okay, I don't have this bottom section yet. We'll worry about that in a second. So I'm going to go to offset, and I want to offset all of that. And instead of 5, I'm going to type in offset because I know I'm going to change it later. And then we want the bottom piece, which is over, kind of comes up. And I want to make sure that this is lined up. And then over here. And that's also the same offset. So I'm going to just dimension from there to the bottom as offset. Here to here as offset. And this is blue because it doesn't know where it is centered. Um, we could try to, you know, actually center it with 
the midpoint, but I'm going to actually just do this. I'm going to say from the middle to here, it's, it is 2.5, but I'm going to do offset divided by two, because later on, we're going to change that offset. This way, everything changes. Then I'm going to trim away that inner piece there. Yeah. So now we have this section. Um, I'm seeing that this is still blue. I don't like that. If I go here, it just doesn't know where that stops. So I'm going to just fix that by doing coincident. That little point is on that line. And that point is on that line. Now I have everything fully defined. I, I really like to make sure that everything is fully defined and I'll turn black before I extrude. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that sketch. And then when I extrude this, I want this piece to extrude. I'm going to do a symmetric extrude. That way everything stays center. And its thickness is, we're going to just call it thickness, right? It's this piece here. So we're going to go thickness. And then this is only really the outside, right? But we can easily just kind of show the sketch again and extrude out these two inner pieces, right? And I'll do symmetric again. And this time for their thickness, if we look back here, we see this five, right? That's the basically the thickness of this inner wall, right? And when we look, you know, kind of down here, this inner wall. So this little, you know, portion is five. So it's you're going to be tempted to want to do like thickness minus five right but it's actually five on both sides so it's minus 10. now instead of doing minus 10 i'm going to do minus offset because we're going to change that offset later and it's offset twice or offset times two right and that's because it's going to have basically this you know wall here needs to be five and this wall over here needs to be five so we're extruding it five less on each side so we're extruding it by 10 less Okay. Now, if you didn't really understand that math and you had just typed in 35, that's okay, right? But this formula is going to ensure that later on when we change the offset, everything changes and we don't have to go back in here. If you typed in 35 later on, you can just do the math and, and change the extrusion. That's fine as well. So now we have most of our, our uh, part. We don't have this cut right here, which is right here, and we don't have the two holes. So I'm going to do this cut first. It's a little bit easier. So that's from the right side. So, and I'm going to hide that sketch, make it look a little nicer. So I'm going to do sketch off of the right side. And we want basically this uh, kind of rectangular piece right here. Kind of looks like a block almost uh, or a hammer. So we're going to go up, over, up, over, down. When I go down, I want to kind of grab that little point there and make sure that they're lined up over and down. And then I'm going to connect those two points. There we go. So now we want to put in our dimensions. Before I do that, though, I'm going to get it centered. So I'm going to find the uh, right there. That's the, the midpoint. And we want that midpoint to be lined up vertically with our origin. That's why I did a symmetric extrude. So I could get everything in the middle with the origin, make it a little bit nicer. So we have 20 is the width there and 10 is the bottom width. So it's 20, so it's 10. That's actually going to not center this. So we can do the same thing with our center right there. And then yeah, we can keep vertical. I want this to be vertical with that guy. That's going to make that center. You also could have dimensioned like the side to there to be five. Um, that would work too. Okay. And then our heights, we have... 12 is this height and eight is that bottom height. So 12 and eight. Again, I'm looking for when I finish this for it all to turn black, which it does. So that means I have everything fully defined. If it doesn't, you always want to go back to your drawing and see if there's something that you missed or didn't do. I want to remove all of this. If there's nothing in your drawing you missed. It's probably one of those geometric constraints, like it's not centered or something like that. Right, so that looks good. That's how I want it to look. And then the final piece are these two holes. Now, when I look at this, this does look like a countersink. Or if I zoom in, it's got that angle, that countersink, but it gives me two by one by 45 degrees. That's actually the chamfer. If I look at the hole tool, okay, the hole tool gives me kind of the inner diameter and the outer diameter, and then the angle in between that angled portion. That's not what this is. So what you can always do with the hole tool 
is you can always do it as a revolve. So if we kind of imagine an imaginary line right here through the middle, it's our center line, we can just draw you know, this shape that we see and revolve it. That's something we can always do and it's really nice. So I have this nine. Remember we said that's the bottom. So this bottom is nine. So if we were revolving, half of it would be 4.5. And that center is 10 away. So we're gonna kind of do that. Now I want this to be right in the center of my part. So I'm gonna do a section view so that I can easily see the center. So we're gonna go down here, find, let's see. Oh, I gotta get rid of that, there we go. Section view, okay. And I'm gonna section view to the front because that's the middle. And then we'll start a sketch on the front. Okay, and I'm gonna start off by making that center line. Actually, I'm gonna use the use tool just so I can get this guy this guy to help me out. So I wanna make a line going basically down. I wanna be careful that when I do that, I did not click on that midpoint. I don't want it in the middle, I just want it somewhere. We actually want it 10 away from the side. So I'm gonna go there to the corner as 10. Actually might have been in the center, um, but I wanna use 10 to make sure that we have it correct. Okay, and then we're gonna go over on the bottom we're gonna go over by 4.5, which is nine is the diameter divided by two, All right? Because we're doing the radius instead of the diameter. And what I'm drawing is I'm drawing this. So I went over and I'm going up, I'm just drawing this profile and then it kind of angles over and then it comes back to the center. So I'm gonna go over to the top, um, but not quite all the way up, just really close to the top. And I'm gonna angle out here. And I'm gonna connect back here. Now we don't know what this dimension is from here to here. We don't know what the top of that circle is. They didn't give us that, which is why we didn't use the countersink. What they instead gave us was that, that angle is one by 45 degrees. So that means basically that, you know, this height here is one. And then this angle here is 45 degrees. And what ends up happening actually is this top diameter becomes um, 11 when you revolve it. So if you were really good at the math, you could have done a countersink with a top diameter of 11, a bottom diameter of 4.5. And then the angle is the angle between this and the other one, which would actually be 90 because it's both 45s. But I feel like this is a lot easier. This is the shape that they gave us, right? So I just draw in that shape right here. And then we're going to do a revolve. So I'm going to come out here, do a revolve. It's really hard to pick that, so I'm going to just hit sketch three. When I click on sketch three, it grabs it for me. Then my revolve axis right there. I don't want to add material. I want to remove it. I'll finish my sketch and then, or my, my uh, revolve, and then I'm going to turn my section view off. So now we have our hole. We want to just mirror that to the other side. This is going to be not a part mirror, but a feature mirror. We want to do the revolve. And then our mirroring plane is the right plane. The fact that I did this all symmetrically makes that really, really easy. If I didn't have that, um, you could always just go to plane, make a mid plane, and put a mid plane between like the two sides, and that would create a middle plane for you. But we already have it, and so that's perfect. So this is our shape that we want. We're going to assign it the material of steel. Um, where are we at? There we go. And they just wanted just regular old steel. So we scroll down, we grab steel. And then we're going to our mass properties, click on our part, and our mass is 1.202. They told us in the instructions to round this to two decimal places. So 1.20 would be this third choice right here. All right. So that's it for this first part. I'll do another video with the modifications but that's uh, creating the, the original, the initial part for this first section of the practice exam.